Welcome, welcome back to the Citizen Channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well. And a preview show as we're getting towards the business end of the season. Yeah, a few big games, and they don't came come a lot bigger than this one, did he? Manchester City versus Real Madrid on the 26th of April 2022. The first leg at the Etihad. I don't like. I prefer the second leg because I I like to know what's going on. I won't be able to be able to get over to Madrid, but I like to watch a match and. No, whatever happens, you know what's happened. I don't, I don't particularly like it, but it is what it is. And in this day and age, you don't seem to bother people whether of your home and away the first leg as much. Perhaps it did in the past, in the old days. It's you know we we always look, prefer to be at home second, but perhaps it's not so important for the players and some fans nowadays. It is for me. So go have a look at that. We'll have a look at our opponents, of course. Well, you know, thirteen times European Cup and Champions League winners, of course. Uh, unlucky for some. So let's hope it stays like that. I mean, we've got 13 titles between us, haven't we? <laughs> Looking at the positive, there you go. I'll be trying to predict, of course, our start 11 based on certain things. Again, I'm recording this before Pep's latest press conference, but we've got a couple of question marks over injuries, etc. And I think fairly sure we came out of the Watford game OK as far as that's concerned. So uh, hopefully nothing to add to it anyway. The match, of course, is on BT Sport. And who's in charge? Yeah, I put something, something out on Twitter. I, mis I misread the line. I went to line down on what I was reading. So I totally messed, made a mess of it. But I think this is... Uh, I, I wish I hadn't now, seen, <laughs> seen how it worked out. But yeah, I missed the top line out and read the ones below it. So I had to redo that, uh, who's in charge. Because obviously we've ended up with the Romanian in charge, who I had originally, but I had the obviously one of the lines of a note. I've misplaced my line on what I was reading. So we've got Mr. Istvan Kovacs again. Uh, we meet again, of course. He was the referee in our Atletico Madrid first Madrid first game, uh, which, to be honest with you, it was poor. He gave five, it was five bookings, yeah. But uh, to be honest with you, he let lots of things go and he should have clamped down very quickly. So I have no optimism whatsoever. And obviously, hopefully, Real Madrid will try and play fo more football than their neighbours will, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've no utter faith in Istvan of Kovacs, having seen him not so long ago, as I say, as, uh, as that. And Romania as well. I mean, you know, should Romanian referees be getting level? games like this I'm not too sure I might be being cruel there if a referee's a good referee it doesn't matter does it but we've not seen so much of that have we he's 37 this will be his uh, 10 he's made 10 appearances so far in the Champions League since 2018-19 of course uh, he's brandished 48 yellow cards and one red card in those 10 games so about five a game so that's that's about par for the course at our place then wasn't it he, he, did, did five, two, I think two for us and three for them, I think, at the Etihad. In his uh, previous, uh, of course, City game, uh, them five yellow cards were nothing compared to the 11 he dished out earlier in the season during a Seville against Lille game, which is the joint second most in the Champions League history. So, as I said, he does dish them out, but he does, doesn't get it right as to when he's supposed to dish them out. That's my only qualm with this referee his assistance his assistance this is the guy I had as the referee in my original thoughts Vasil Florin Marinescu he's he's one of the Lionels and Ovidio Artain there both from Romania fourth official Arta Diaz and on VAR yeah VAR we've got German we've got a German Marco Fritz and his assistant making the, the German coffee and and uh, cooking the Cooking the Frankfurters as Mr. Bastian Danker. I mean, that's very what's it, isn't it? I mean, what's the word? Um, I can't think of the word, but uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure he does more than that. The assistant VAR, but uh, what he does, I have no idea. But Marco Fritz is the main guy, anyway. And I think we've had him before as well from memory. Previous meetings, yeah, on us even at the moment, guys. Yeah, we've played six, one, two, drawn, two, lost two. So a nice symmetry uh, involved in that, isn't it? Of course, 2012, 2013, we met, we met at the group stage, a one, two, a two, one defeat at home and a two, two draw over there. The 2015, 16 semi finals, of course, a pretty drab nil, nil at our place and a pretty drab one nil defeat at their place. So us get knocked out, unfortunately. And 2019, 20, yeah, last revenge, of course, we beat them in the round of 16 home and away by identical scores 2-1 we thoroughly deserved that so it's what you know we're being positive a couple of seasons ago so I'll let them think on that one eh 
please. The odds, odds, the odds uh, involved, please, when the fun stops, stop. I don't condone gambling. But Liverpool are now the Champions League favourite to win the Champions League for the first time. City have been favourites all season, but obviously because of the Villarreal as opposed to Real Madrid tie up, I think that would have been the other way around if the, if the actual uh, City actual uh, matches have been slightly different. So they're now six to five favourites with City second favourites to win the Champions League at five to four. But I'll live with that. I'll, I'll, I'm happy with that. I'm not bothered with that. We might see that change once again if City and Liverpool both get to the final. Certainly if City uh, finally win this league title over the next few games, but uh, we'll have to see, won't we? Uh, the match itself, City are eight to 15 on. Uh, so yeah, okay. If you if you like that sort of, them sort of odds, not too bad. A draw is seven to two and a Real win you can get 11 to 2 on Real Madrid winning this one so please check out my little odds feature as well there'll be some plenty of value on a tight game like this so you can watch that and there's more say last game against Watford yeah a couple of wins for the two two bets two wins for the charity so more in the pot for the Christie our nominated charity so that was good so check out that odds show and see what what we're going for for this Real Madrid game so how's it gonna pan out well the English and Spanish league leaders of course Head to head in the place for the Champions League final in Paris. As I say, we've spoken about their, their total dominate, well, not domination, but 30, 13 titles. I think the next best is that one of the Milan teams has won it six times. So, uh, yeah, Liverpool won it six times, haven't they? As far as I know, I'm sure, they, I'm sure they told me that. I'm sure they held six fingers up on one hand for some reason. I'm not too sure what it was, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't need to know about history of Real Madrid and how many times they've won. I think they won about twelve. I think they won half of them before anyone else had won it, didn't they? Back it back in the day, uh, Real Madrid, of course, despite taking a three-one lead back home against Chelsea, just about scraped through on the night. All credit to Chelsea; they did very, very well. Uh, they were deservedly three 0 down at one stage, and Chelsea could have could have looked as though they were going through that. But uh, despite being second best for most of that Bernabeu encounter. Real did show real character to, to take the game to extra time, and where another goal by them was enough to carry them through on aggregate, of course. Uh, in the league, it's easy, isn't it? It's easy when they've virtually clinched it now. Uh, they've not played this weekend. We'll talk about that in a second. But they clinched the title. 15, the, the 15 points clear of Barca at the moment, which you know is <laughs> is, is a great advantage for me. Let's face it, they can rest players and you know they're going to get what they need and other teams are going to drop points. So the La League is in the bag, isn't it? I mean, I know you shouldn't tempt fate, but I don't, if, if they don't win that, it will be a bit of a minor miracle. So despite losses against PSG and Chelsea in the Champions League, they've, they've, they've won through really well. And uh, the only recent blip, of course, in the league form was a, was a surprising, and it was a surprising, 4-0 loss at home to Barcelona, of course. But that sort of papers over the cracks of Barcelona and the season as a whole where Real Madrid have certainly took, the, took their league by the scruff of the neck. Of course, you've got quality. We know they've got quality. They've got the big names. And we've also got a gentleman called who's, who's had a, we've had a bit of previous with in the past. And Mr. Hazard, of course, he's trying to get back fit for this one. He's not been able to play because of injury, but uh, fingers crossed for them or fingers crossed for us. Uh, do you want him to play? I'm not overly bothered about Hazard. I don't, I don't remember. All right, he has played well against City, but I don't remember recently. Uh, being that good, I think. Uh, so I'm not overly bothered about Hazard. Let me know what you think, guys. But uh, if he does get fit or not. But they've got people like Karim Benzema, of course, who uh, certainly a lot of media claim is currently uh, well, certainly not in our eyes, but certainly the best player in the world at the moment. Obviously, we would perhaps stick get KDB up there as well. But a lot of the media are claiming that. Of course, Luka Modric, who never seems to age, does he? he must be 52 now. Not too sure, but he's still amongst the greatest midfielders of all time. And he sort of helps rescue that game against Chelsea, of course. And uh, Vincius, I've not seen much of this guy, but Vincius Junior's rise as one of the best wingers in Europe. Yeah, very a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of love out there for him. Yes, there's no doubt in. I mean, and, and other players, uh, Real Madrid are just a tough, tough proposition. Of course, yeah, but we're a tough proposition for them as well. Uh, we can handle Hazard, of course we can. The only problem we've got with someone like Hazard and perhaps with Vin Vincius Jr. on the wing is, is defensive-wise, we are struggling. We are, we, are, we are in a little bit of trouble, aren't we, without uh, Walker and Cancelo. I mean, Cancelo needlessly because he was suspended there. But it is a problem. I mean, Ancelotti's, Ancelotti's men are a big obstacle for City now, even more so that they've virtually clinched the league, which is, you know... 
and they've been far more consistent than we have. There's the odd blip, of course, there is. But uh, add to that, the last game was a comfortable three-one win at mid-table. Osasuna on Wednesday the 20th of April so they've literally had a six day break between that and this game so they've had a nice rest so they'll be all just ticking over of course we've got to fly over to ours but that doesn't take too long does it so they've had a six week break a six day break six week break that probably could have yeah no knowing Spanish you know knowing how they look after the clubs probably could have happened so six day break to City 3 and let's face it, the tough game against Atletico that we had had repercussions for City. The footballing gods seem to be a little bit against us and ignore us at the moment. Um, the, only, the only plus point is that at least they were a bit kinder against Watford and we came through that pretty well without ex, ex, you know, using up too much energy, etc. Uh, but we do say still have these uh, problems and nursing injuries to major players, which... Uh, Real Madrid, as I say, apart from Hazard, uh, they're pretty much a fully fit squad as far as I can see. And uh, as I say, they will be rested. We won't be overly rested, but as I said, fortunately, the Watford game didn't, wouldn't have taken too much out of us. But of course, as I said, Real Madrid will be wary of us. Uh, of course, it was only two seasons ago when we beat them twice. So I'm sure Real Madrid are just as scared of us as perhaps we are wary of Real Madrid. So... Obviously, we'll see which Real Madrid turns up on the night, but uh, let, let's hope they don't do what they did to Chelsea in the first leg. So that's up to us to stop them. So how about us? What about City? Our starting eleven. Let's have a stab at this one. Okay, the Watford game wasn't as hard as it could have been, so that should be a definite benefit to us. Uh, Pep has his players, and he has his big Euro favourites, if you like, the players that will play week in, week out uh, in the European in the European games. Probably slighted, bit bit changed the last two or three versions. It's perhaps some players he's always relied on have slightly uh, probably felt he's let him down a little bit. But obviously with the unavailability of Cancelo and doubts over Walker, if Walker's fit, then Walker will play this. He, even if he's 80% fit, will he play? Possibly. Uh, but that does leave a big problem if Kyle isn't fit. And uh, Pep will be forced, and he's done it before. He used, he's done it before. Obviously, when Walker was banned for the games, obviously he took account of that and made changes. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing for City. And of course, he might use Stones or Aki in slightly different roles in this game. But uh, of the two, I think Stones will definitely get the nod. I think Stones will come in this game because we've got Laporte and Diaz, of course, uh, as the centre halves. Uh, but I think Aki might still be preferred, even though Zinchenko had a great game against Watford. Uh, I think Aki perhaps will be preferred if he has to play on the left over Zinchenko. The other five, apart from the defence that we talked about, obviously you've got Rodri as well. Rodri's got to be in there, isn't he? The other five pops possibly pick themselves. You know, Bernardo and Foden will come back in after a, a total rest against Watford. And surely Gundogan and Mares, who did get time against Watford, they're, they're surely in Pep's thoughts to start this game as well. And to say the other, other one is KDB, is an obvious one who started the game against Watford and brought off, as far as I can see, got a bit of a knock, but I think he looks okay. So he's fine and he's his first name on the sheet anyway, isn't he? A wild card, obviously, Jesus has put himself forward, hasn't he? As a potential, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, Sterling, Ferner, Grealish. It will be a big, big surprise if any three of those make it to the start 11. As I said, Sterling's one of those guys that Pep was perhaps a go-to for Pep in early European games, but he's sort of faded out just a little bit recently. So, yeah, so that'll be interesting to see. So my 11, based on those little little uh, judgments I've made, uh, if I, I'm hoping to get at least nine or ten of these uh, when it comes to the team itself. As I say, allowing for Walker. If Walker's fit, then, of course, he will play, but I'm going on the basis that he's not. So I've gone Edison, Stones, Diaz, Laporte, Aki, Rodri, KDB, Gundo, Bernardo, Foden and Mares. Yeah, that's my 11. Let me know what you think, guys. Let, let me know what you think of that and my... Uh, my machinations and working outs as to what Pep might do, which uh, Pep's Pep, isn't he? We, you know, in the in the best best in the world. Occasionally we get it right. I think I've been got his team right two or three times this season, but not not very often because you don't know what he's doing. But let me know what you think, guys. Anyway, that's that's what I think we'll start with this game. As I said, with a proviso over what happens with Kyle Walker and whether Jesus did enough, perhaps to Pep to just stick him in and take a chance.
Possibly not, possibly not, but I'm sure he'll get featured at some time if things aren't quite working out. Right, quirky stats, guys, before we go. City and Real Madrid. Uh, Pep has now reached nine European Cup semi-finals, the most of any manager in the history of the competition. Carlo Ancelotti himself has reached eight, so well done, well done, Pep, for that. City manager Pep again has limited Real Madrid from the knockout stage of the UEFA Champions League on two previous occasions, beating them 3-1 on aggregate in 2010-11 with Barcelona and, of course, 4-2 on aggregate in 2019-20, which we've talked about with City. He's been looking to become the first manager to eliminate Real Madrid from the UEFA Champions League on three occasions. So let's hope he can do that. Madrid have only won one of their last six away games against English teams in the UEFA Champions League, drawn two, lost three. Although, of course, that victory did come against Chelsea earlier this month. No team has ever beaten two different English sides away from home in the knockout stages in a single UEFA Champions League campaign. That's a good one. Pep, four wins, and Carlo Ancelotti, two wins, have faced each other on six occasions as opposing managers. All four of Guardiola's wins came against Ancelotti's Everton, three in the Premier League and one in the FA Cup, while the Italian's two victories came in the UEFA Champions League semi-finals in 2013-14, with his Real Madrid side beating Bayern Munich 5-0 on aggregate. We won't want that, do we? Still in his netted 24 goals, I don't think he'll play. For City in the UEFA Champions League, if he scores in this game, he would overtake Paul Scholes on 20 and trail only Wayne Rooney, who, who's he, never heard of him, uh, for the most 30, with the most goals scored by an English player for an English team in the competition's history. Benzema has scored 12 goals in nine appearances for Madrid in UEFA Champions League this season, including a hat-trick in his previous trip to England, of course, against Chelsea. Only one player has netted more away goals against English sides in a single Champions League campaign, with Serge Gnabry, or Nabry, netting six for Bayern Munich in 2019-20, four versus Spurs and two versus Chelsea, where anyone can score against them, can't they? It's no, no big deal. Anyway, there you go, guys. There's the quirky stats. Hope you enjoyed that. Please tune back in for the match report, of course, with the player ratings from the Manchester Evening News on Wednesday, about Wednesday lunchtime. And, of course, please check out my little odd show as well and have a look at where the old charity bets are going this week. That would be great if you could do that. So let you know, let me know in your comments what you think and you're looking forward to it. I'm okay at the moment. I, I don't overly get how I'll, I'll be a bit more tense as the as we get towards kickoff time, but it doesn't overly bother me this early, early doors. I'm recording this on the Sunday before. But, uh, let me know how you're feeling, let me know what you think. Give us your score predictions, give us your give us your start in eleven. Let, let me know. It'd be great to hear from you guys and thanks as ever for your support. Anyway, until we meet again, I'm gonna ask one thing, don't I? Please. Uh, yeah, so stay safe, Blues. Come on, City, and thanks for watching. Bye for now.